Hi there, and welcome to today's video. We're going to be looking at how to do a combined artist response. I've done one earlier, I'm going to talk you through it, and then I'm going to show you step by step how to create your own combined artist response. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is talk you through what goes on each slide so you know what it looks like when it's finished, and then I'll go through and help you understand how to do the slides. Um, for this, obviously, we're using Google Slides, which is a free application that you can use as part of your Google suite of apps for Google Classroom. So what we're going to look at first of all is I'm going to use two of the examples that I've done as videos so you know which ones I'm using. So Victoria Steamer style of geometric landscape where you've got a piece of the um, circular shape that's been rotated to create a reflection of the sky. And then Doug Aitken style diamond landscapes that I did in a recent video where you can see that he's taken sections of landscapes and rotated them by 45 degrees, created this diamond shape, and then put it all together as a work of art. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these elements from this Victoria Sema and we're going to place them into the sky of the Doug Aitkins one. Now, to do your combined artist response, it is really encouraged that you go and take some new photographs rather than using the ones you've already done. It would be very easy just to take this picture, edit in some circles and go, there I am, I'm done. But we're not showing the true level of skill that we need to to get to the higher grades. We want to be using confidence and assured standard of work. So what I did is I went off, I knew this is what I wanted to do. So I went down to the beach over the weekend and I took these photographs. I was very, very lucky. It was a beautiful winter's day. The sun was really low in the sky and it cast these amazing reflections on the water so it's great for events it's great for reflections and from this i then chose my best four i was very impressed with the way the light mirrored almost perfectly these the angle of the sand and the angle of the clouds it created this lovely um symmetrical image i like the idea of the sort of close-up and then the distance with the tiny bits of sea the idea of catching the waves as they're coming in and try not to get too wet of my feet and then this one a really low angle so putting the camera right down onto the beach so you've got the foreshortening of the foreground so these were the four best four that i used i took those and i put them into photo p and i created this edit this is my response so i took the shapes like i talked about before the rotation and then put together the image to create this rotated um geometric landscape and finally, I will produce a slide to show you how I did it. So I took a screenshot. I did this in Photo P. I'm going to talk you through that in a moment in the video. So by the end of the video, I would have recreated what I have here for you in real time. So you can see just how long it will take you to do these tasks. So that's what we did. So first of all, I'm going to make a new slide. So new slideshow presentation. We're going to call it Combined Artist Response. And then we know how to use this. So we need a, another new slide. On this, we're going to type in contact sheet. And I'll refresh your memory if you haven't done a contact sheet for a while, how we do it. So all the photographs I've taken for this piece of work I've saved into my drive. I made a folder called Combined Artist Research. Here are all the pictures. Now to make a contact sheet, as I've shown you in another video, but I'll talk you through it in real time here, we need to click on the three dots in the corner. We zoom out so we see the images how we want them to look on the screen. That's too far. We use the snipping tool. So we go new we draw a box over the images so we've got the unique numbers to prove there are pictures we click on that we find our slide channels is my new one and press ctrl v and there is my contact sheet i'm just going to really quickly click here and you can see that it's named it as combined artist response i'm going to call it t so that i don't get muddled up so there's my contact sheet. Now I need a new slide, and on this it's going to be the best four. 
rest for. Now, there's two ways of doing this, but I'm going to do it the quick, easy way today. I'm going to go to my contact sheet, click on the picture that I want to use, which is that one. Wait for it to load. Go on my snipping tool, click new, take a snip. And then go to my slideshow. And control V, and there it is now. What I'm also going to do, because these are the ones I'm going to be using in my response, I'm going to, I'm going to close that first. Cancel that a minute. I'm going to go to here, close that. Okay, close that. Create a new project. I want to use a square, so I'm using the Instagram template. I want to create that. I'm just going to make the dots print a bit higher because everyone's a bit low res. And create that. So I'm using PhotoP today because it's a lot more readily available than Photoshop. We could do exactly the same thing in Photoshop, which is what I did the responses originally in, but we're going to use PhotoP today. So because I've just taken a snip, as you'll remember, when I press Control V now, I will have one of my images and I can rescale it to how I want it to be. I'm going to leave it like that for a minute. What you'll see in a minute is I'll create layers and I'll also do this at the same time. So we're multitasking. Go back to my contact sheet. Choose the next image and it was this one with the rocks in the foreground. Wait for it to load. Go to my snipping tool, go new. Take my snip like so. Then I'm going to go to my combined artist research thing, press control V. I've got it there, I'll tidy that up in a minute, go to photo P, press control V there as well, scale it out a bit so it's a bit bigger. Put it over here so I've got the next part of it. Go back to where all my pictures are. I really liked one of the ones here with the waves, maybe it's that one. Open that one. That was the one I really liked. And snipping tool, new, take my snip. Got it. Go back to my combined one, control V, put it there, come back to photo P, control V, make it a bit bigger. Put that down there. There's just one more to go, so then I'm going to go back here. And it was the one here, wasn't it, with the triangular effect? That one, that one. I'm going to go with this one. So we need to make it big. And we will go new. Take the snip. Go back to here, control V, go back to photo P and control V. So you see, what we're doing is we're multitasking, we're doing two things at once, which is always fun. And there is my four pictures in here. I'm going to go back to my slideshow. To make my best four work, I'm going to make them a bit smaller, arrange them nicely on the page. You remember on my how to do a contact sheet video. I spent hours and hours moving them around on the page, so I'll try not to take too long today. And then I'll scale them all so they're nice and neat. That's too... The good thing about Google Slides is you get little red lines that help you line stuff up with each other. And then So there's my best four. Now, we can annotate this. I will be using these images in my response to the two artists. Work. And you can annotate to your heart's content. Here, we need another new slide. I'm just going to 
move this completely out of the way. I might just hide it all together. So we're going to press new slide and we're going to put in our response. So to make our response, because we've been multitasking in photo P over here, you can see that we have got our four layers. Okay, this is that layer, that's that layer, that's that layer, and that's that layer. Now, quick thing about photo P, remember, tick transform controls, tick auto select. Now, the first thing we're going to do is arrange the pictures how we wanted them. So we need to, to rotate them. So to do that, we click on it and turn until we get it in the place we want to. We want that in that corner. I'm going to move this one down into this corner and this one over to there. I'm going to turn this one around. So turning it around. like so we need to turn this one around this is where the the, the work goes into your artist research is making the responses getting things how you want them and doing really effective work so that one's going to go there. so if you can remember from how we did the diamond landscape image we need to create a little guideline to help us we have got currently rulers so we need to go to a window oh, sorry view rulers tick that and then we drag down our guideline into the middle and across to the middle like so so we know where we're putting our images now the next thing to do is scale our pictures so they fill these diamond shapes so we do that first and then we will crop them down later we want the line of the horizon to go corner to corner this might take a little while to get exactly right but we do this first and then when we trim it down later it will look really effective and we have to keep stretching it until we get it just right there's no point rushing at this stage Okay, I'm pretty happy with that one. I'm just going to hide that one when I do the next one. So stretch it, stretch it, move it. Remember, we're going corner to corner, so I need to turn it more. Turn it less. Move it up a little bit. That works for me. So I'm just going to hide that one, go on this one. Get it to fit the space, get that horizon where I want it. Rotate it ever so slightly so the corners are corner. There we go, hide that one. The last one, and this one needs to be stretched quite a lot. Is not the horizon's quite high up on it. What we don't want to do is leave a little white corner, which I did when I was first. And this one's going to need a bit of a rotation as well. There we go, happy with that. Right, so we'll start with this one. I'm going to use the um, selector. Um, We'll use its correct name, the Rectangular Selector Tool. We will draw a box over this bit. The quickest and easiest way of doing this is Edit, Copy, Edit, Paste. You will now see that if I close the eye on the original layer, I have now cut out that layer. So we're going to open the eye of this layer. Draw another box over this one. Make sure we clicked on the right layer. Okay. Edit, copy, edit, paste, and close the eye on that. And you see we've got two of them. Boom, boom. Click on layer three this time. Open the eye. 
Now, what we do, because we've got those two corners, we can cheat and drag that underneath them. Boom, it's done already. And same with this one. Drag it underneath. Move that slightly. Drag it to the bottom. And if I open its eye, you will see, hopefully, if I now go to view and show and guides, there we have it. I'm very pleased with that lining up. It really works. We've got all the different elements in place. You can see a really nice diamond shape. So that is, at this point, worth going file export as because we're using a photo piece we want to make sure we save it properly click save i'm going to put it in here so we're going to call it diamond landscape and that's saved and we are going to go back to our combined artists research we're going to the quickest way of doing this actually is to do a little snip so we'll do a little snipping tool of this. We'll take it just outside, keep that little border to it. We're going to go to here and we're going to pop in this image here. Then we're going to go back to Photo P. Now, what we liked originally, I'll go to this one, is this effect, the circular effect in the sky. So we're going to try and recreate that. And to do that, we're going to use the elliptical select tool. Okay, so we're going to draw a circle in the sky. I'm going to try and line it up with the corner so I get it just right, bring it down a little bit. Do you know what? That's a square, isn't it? So we're going to click on this ellipse select tool, start in that place, and draw a circle. I want it, don't want it directly in the middle, because it won't work as effectively. So about there, perfect. Now, this is where I have to be clever. I have to find the layer that that part is on, which is this layer. Now, edit, copy, edit, paste. And now you'll see there's a little circular layer here. Go to my move tool and click on it. No, click on a little bit. Click and rotate. There we go. And that is isn't the horizon dead straight with the other one. That is my first piece. So what I need to do now is find the eraser tool. It'll be behind the brush tool. So you go on at the brush tool, look down, find the eraser tool. We need to set this up. So we want it quite big, bigger than that. We want it on a soft edge. Bigger, bigger, bigger. A big soft edge and making sure I'm on the layer with that little circle. I'm going to go along the edge here and just fade it in just ever so slightly so that it creates that effect. Okay, I'm going to click on another layer, press control D. So there you can see this is what we're looking for. I think it looks really good if I have a circle there, put another circle down here, and then a diamond and a diamond. I think that would be the effect I'm going for. So in order to do that, I find the layer, find the tool, click on the tool, so do the same thing again, so bring the circle down, not too far, not too big, approximately there, edit, copy, edit, paste, and then we're going to go to Move tool. We're going to rotate this round. And we're going to stop there. Go back to the eraser tool. Just tiny. Once you've got soft edge, just only a little couple of clicks is all it takes. And there we have it. Happy with that. So after I've done these two, I'm going to save it again. So we're going to go export as JPEG again. We're going to click save, and this time we're going to call it Diamond Landscape with Circles. And I'm going to use my snipping tool again, make a new one. Oh, that's going to be annoying. 
No, thank you. So we go back to step into. Make sure it's new. Click on that. And you can buy that. I'll put that one there. And remember, we're going to actually change this to responses. And we can do some annotation on these in a bit. We're going to make another new slide. And then we are going to complete it. So we are going back to photo P. This time, we talked about doing the square section. So we're going to do those. I'm going to take it from, again, in the sky. So we haven't got it. There's an exact center of it. I think it will work more effectively there. So I find the layer that that is on. It is on layer five. Put it copy, edit, paste, and then rotate that round. Like so. Make sure it's dead lined up. You can always use the numbers up here as a guide. They tell you whether you're in the right place. Just a few little taps on that will be all it needs. Perfect. So like that one, then I need to find the this corner, that tool again. Remember we've taken it from the back there, so they all pretty much line up together. About there, I think. About there. Yeah, perfect. So we go edit, copy, edit, paste. We click on the move tool, we rotate that round. Lovely. I think I went too far. Yes, I did. So I'm going to move back a bit more. Now, somehow, however, with my finger, I nudged something and I lost the opacity. That's bad. So we go on the eraser tool, a couple of clicks. Make sure we're on the right layer. And that is layer seven. There we go. Fix there. And there you have it. Now, we could also do some adjustments to all sorts of things to our image. But at the moment, I'm quite happy with the natural looking effect. So, file, export as JPEG, save. And we're going to call it with circles and squares and save that. Then we're going to take a little snip of it for our slideshow. And we're going to place that into our slideshow on the next slide. And I think it, as it's a quite a showy piece, we'll make it quite big. And we can just delete these so we have it as the show piece. We can do some annotation in here. And then the last thing we need to do is make another slide, go back to Photo P, take a snipping tool off the whole screen so that when we do our annotation, we can talk about what we did and where we did it. So I'm just going to minimize that slightly, go back to here. Control V. How am I going to call this? How I made my response. So we can then I used lots of and made my image by rotating and changing. Selected areas and shapes. 
And you can annotate away into your thing here. I always find it really nice to pop a little arrow in here and there. Show you what we're doing. You can change the color of the arrow and make it look really professional. That you can put that up with a little arrow head on it. Like that. Yeah. We don't need two of them. Right, okay, so let's talk ourselves through what we've done. We've got our combined artist response. It would be probably a good idea in this slide here to put the artist that we have used. So on here, we looked at the geometric landscape and we looked at diamond landscape. So if I take those two images in here, and put that there, put that there, and then maybe put a big plus in the middle. And make that a bit bigger. So this is what we've done, and this is how we've done it. So we've got the art, combined artist response, looked at these two different images, took some more photographs based on them, put our best fours in, did some different versions of it, made our response here that we're really pleased with, and this is how we did it. So that is what is expected for your combined artist responses. Okay, thank you very much for watching this um, tutorial. Hope you found it useful. Um, if you like what you've seen and want to watch more, go to Quentin Carpenter Nature of Flowers and um, you can have a look at what we're doing. So you can see on here, this is the video that shows you how we did that. So you can watch the videos there. Okay, brilliant. Hope you've enjoyed it. Obviously, if you want to see more, click the subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.